Testing, testing, testing. Let me know, everyone, if you can hear me in the chat on our pre-show here at the Geo Show. We are getting ready to go on another virtual field trip. If you haven't done so already, let us know in the chat where you're watching from. We love to give shout outs here on the program. So make sure you let us know where you're watching from today. Also, go ahead and get logged into quizzes. So you can go to, to joinmyquiz.com, enter in today's game code. All right, and we'll post that in your chat and get everything going in just a second. Let's go ahead and continue practicing playing quizzes. is 
1-800-795-795. You can join us and play along on quizzes today. Like we have a lot of science project students out there today. Hey, let's do another quizzes question. All right, who was the tallest U.S. president? So let's do a little uh, mic check with some of our guest classrooms here today. And let's go ahead and bring someone on here. All right, so let's go over and we'll unmute you. Hi, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Awesome. Hey, where are you watching from today? Rock, 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 Texas. Texas. Okay. And do you know who was the tallest U.S. president? The um, Abraham Lincoln. All right. So if we come back here out of Barack Obama, Abraham Lincoln, James Madison, George Washington, it was Abraham Lincoln, six foot four inches tall. He was a big, tall president. And we'll go ahead over and to our other classroom and we'll do a quick mic check before we get started here today. Hi everyone, how are you today, Explorers? Good. Awesome. And where are you watching from today? Tabernacle, New Jersey. All right, Tabernacle, New Jersey. All right, so welcome everyone. We're gonna go ahead and get started with today's virtual field trip. If you haven't let us know in the chat yet where you're watching from, you can do that right now. We'll give some shout outs but first, let's go ahead and get today's show started. Let's do it. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, by many is regarded as the greatest president of all time, partly because he led the country through its darkest time the Civil War. But what about the president before he was the president? What jobs did Abraham Lincoln have before he became the president? What was his life like? Who were the people in the president's family and what were their lives like? We're going to learn all that and more as we tour around the Lincoln family home on today's virtual field trip, Abraham Lincoln, the lawyer. All right. Welcome, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started with today's virtual field trip. My name is Brandon. I'm coming to you live from our studio in Portland, Maine. And as we look over our live cam right now, it's 32 degrees and sunny where I live. But as always, I want you to right now reflect on, think about your home explorers. Where do you live? Because you don't live in Portland, Maine, or maybe you do. Do you have a rainy day today? Is it hot? Is it cold? What's your family like? What's your classmates like? Right? All of these things impact you and help you see the world differently than I see the world. And I see the world differently than maybe your teachers and parents do. So I live in a place called the Dawnland, and it's called that because dawn is another word for sunrise. The sun rises every morning and hits the Dawnland first every single day. 
you may have heard of it as Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine in the United States of America, and Southern Quebec, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia in today's Canada. But before it ever had any of these younger names, this place has been known as the Dawnland because the people of the Dawnland live here. The native peoples, the Penobscot, Passamaquoddy, Maliseet, Mi'kmaq, and the Beniki people still live here today and have been here for over 10,000 years. And that's an important part about my home and how I see the world today, Explorers. What about you? Where's your home and where do you live on Turtle Island? If you don't know that information, one of our favorite resources here at Learn Around the World to share is native-land.ca. So you can come here and type in anywhere that you live or visit in the top left-hand box. You'll get a little list of links and resources to the local tribes and nations to wherever you typed in up there. Speaking of locations, let's start off right there today. Where are we going today? We'd like to start off as All right, today we are visiting Illinois on our virtual field trip. And we have lots of folks out there that uh, are joining us today. So shout outs going to all of our New Jersey classrooms, Major uh, Missouri's in the house, South Carolina, Lexington, South Carolina's in the house today. We have Wyoming is in the house. Welcome, Wyoming. New York in Delaware County is joining us today. And we have our northern friends up in Ottawa, Canada. So welcome, everyone. Let us know if you haven't already in the chat. Where are you watching from today? So we can give you a shout out here on the show. All right. So today we're going to Illinois to continue our conversation about Abraham Lincoln. Now, the country changed very much during the life of Abraham Lincoln. He was born in 1809, and the country expanded, expanded, expanded. Remember, we didn't start off with 50 states in the United States of America. It started off with those original 13 colonies. And as the United States continued to colonize different native territories, the country grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And that happened very much so during Abraham Lincoln's lifetime. So the time he died in 1865, this is roughly what the country looked like at that time. All right. So today we're going to one of these states, which is Illinois. And let's go ahead and zoom in here. And you can go ahead and grab your quizzes if you're playing along, Explorers. And can you tell me which one of these lovely states, A, B, or C, is Illinois? Which one of these lovely states here, A, B, or C, is Illinois? You can let me know right now on quizzes. out there saying a which many of you did you are virtually correct and a virtual high five goes out to you so today we are headed to illinois explorers so as we learned last week abraham lincoln was born in kentucky he spent his boyhood in indiana that's where we went last week on the geo show and today we're going to continue the journey throughout abraham lincoln's life and we are headed to illinois today on our <laughs> virtual field trip what are we going to see in Illinois? Well, we're going to see Abraham Lincoln's adult home. This is the only home he ever owned, by the way, and it's located in Springfield, Illinois, at the Lincoln Home National Historic Site. And this is run and operated by the National Park Service. And you can see his home right here. It's still here today. You can actually visit here and walk in that home, which we're about to do on our virtual field trip. Now, it's not just his home, but the four blocks around his home have all been preserved and renovated to look like it did during the time the Lincolns were living here. All right, so let's go ahead and visit Abraham Lincoln's home. All right, so welcome on the ground. You can see here we have a wooden sidewalk, and wooden sidewalks would have been typical of the 1800s. Now, this is an original, like we spoke about last week. There are a lot of things that have been um, restored or recreated. And why is that, right? Well, we want to see what it might have looked like here. Remember, um, there aren't a lot of pictures and there are pictures at this time 
versus when we talked about his boyhood home last week when he grew up in a very poor family in southern Illinois. There were no photographs where Abraham Lincoln grew up. So a lot of that had is guesswork. You make educated guesses, right? When you study other places that would have been very similar during that time period. Now, we do have photographs of this area. Abraham Lincoln was the president and very popular at this time when he was older. And there was a such thing as photography, but it's not as quick as pulling out our phone and posting to Instagram and TikTok today is, right? So it's very different during this time. So when the Lincolns lived here, there was no asphalt road, right? So it would have been dirt, lots of duddy, uh, duddy, dusty, dirty, rainy, muddy days out here uh, when the Lincolns were sitting out on the porch, for example. And also horses would have been going up and down. And when you read about some of the newspapers from this time period, they talk about the pig problem. Remember, even big, large cities like New York City in the mid 1800s had livestock in the city. You won't find that today, but at this time, you would have seen probably some pigs with some piglets on the side of the road. And in fact, people complained about it, like people complain today, maybe about a pothole in the middle of your street. But then it was a pig hole, right? Uh, with those pigs living there. All right, so let's go ahead and walk in the front door here at the Lincoln home. Now, a couple of things we'll see here in the Lincoln home. Uh, one, everything that's hard is original. Well, almost everything. You see these kind of, uh, they look kind of like a baby gate, right? Have you ever seen those? These aren't original. The National Park Service has installed these, so we can't walk through this narrow hallway. They get lots of visitors here, and they want to make sure everyone goes in the direction that the National Park Service wants them to. So we're going to walk the direction that they want us through throughout the house. Now, when we look at all the soft things, like the carpet that you see here and the wallpaper, that is not original, but it's copies of the original. So the original patterns, but it's been renewed so we can see what it looks like, not when it's all old and faded from the sunlight, but when it might have looks like when the Lincolns were living here. But all of the hard furniture, like I said, is original. And if it's not the original Lincoln furniture, it has time period furniture that has been uh, put in here too because they didn't have all of the furniture that the Lincolns had. All right, so this is what we're going to do and the, the route we're going to take through the home. Let's look at the floor plan of the home just so you know how we're going to move throughout the house. Right now, we're on the first floor. We're going to go through what's called the parlor. Uh, and then we're going to go through the dining room. And then we're going to go into the family room. Then we're going to go upstairs. Now, we're going to go up the front stairs. There is a kitchen on the front floor, but on the front floor, the first floor, but we won't see that until we come out because we're going to go upstairs, go through the second floor and come down the back stairs through the kitchen and we'll see the kitchen then. So just so you know the route we're taking and what we're going to see here as we move through the house. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead into that parlor. So as we turn left and head into the parlor, a couple things we're going to see. Again, all of the furniture is original except the post upholstery. That's the, the cushiony uh, parts of the chairs. And uh, what's really neat about the parlor, sorry, kids, you're not allowed in here. So if you're one of Abraham Lincoln's children, you're not allowed to come in here and play. This room is for the adults. And specifically, Abraham Lincoln, when he was trying to become the president, Right, He was throwing political parties and hosting uh, guests here. And when he would do that, it was just for the adults. Sorry, kids, you're not allowed in here. Um, now, when they did have a political party, the Lincolns could close off the back parlor from the front parlor. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, unfortunately, right, uh, and the times are different back then than they are today. So women were not allowed to vote in the 1800s. And if you're not allowed to vote, you're not allowed to serve as a politician either, right? Today, that's no longer true. Yeah, good job. But that was true back then. Also, when you're having a political party and you're talking politics, right, it just wasn't uh, men and women were separated. So the women would be up in the front parlor uh, having tea and socializing, and they would talk politics too, of course. Um, but the men were back talking politics by themselves 
And that's just how things were. Is it okay? No. Is it okay today? Definitely not. And uh, could women back then participate? And definitely, yes, they could have. They just weren't allowed to, unfortunately. And that's just how things were. All right. And so uh, also when Abraham was here by himself, he would close off and use this back area, kind of like a, an office area in the back parlor as well. Now, what's really neat that you see back here is this item on the desk. And this item is kind of like a worktop, uh, kind of like a laptop computer today. So this is uh, what they call a traveling desk. So you can see you have a place for your papers to write on and write your letters. Well, it would fold up and close off and you could carry it like a briefcase and go between your office and home back in the 1800s. Hey, speaking of jobs, what kind of jobs did Abraham Lincoln have as an adult? What do you think? Do you know? Let me know right now on quizzes if you're playing along with us. Right. So choose all that apply. Abraham Lincoln was actually all of these things at one time. He was a postmaster. He was a lawyer. He was a store owner and he was a surveyor. So he was actually part of all of these jobs. But the primary job he had uh, throughout his 20s. So he left home when he was around 21 years old. And uh, throughout his 20s, he was a postmaster for a time that's kind of like a mailman in a small town he lived in. He lived in a place called um, New Salem before moving to Springfield. And if you have time in our post show, I'll show you in New Salem. And, uh, and then he was a surveyor for a time. So that's if you, if you buy a home and you want to know where your land starts and stops, a surveyor will come out and tell you that uh, pretty much. Uh, he was a store owner for a time of a small general store. So that's where you would go to uh, in Illinois or Indiana in the 1800s to buy your sugar or other things that you couldn't grow yourself or maybe at Ted's. Uh, but his primary job during his late 20s, he started getting into politics in Illinois. And he noticed that a lot of politicians were lawyers. And he actually taught himself law. He taught himself to be a lawyer. He studied under other lawyers and he ended up becoming a very successful lawyer. And that's what he did for most of his life. We think about him as the president of the United States, of course, but he grew, uh, went from a very poor person to grew his own wealth uh, as a lawyer. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more today, but that was his primary job. But he did all of these things when he was an adult. So, uh, you know, some of the other impressive things that uh, he did, uh, by the way, this is the dining room where they would all have a meal together. Uh, President Lincoln, when he was back in that back parlor, he would think a lot. And he's the only president, he's the only president to have a patent. So what is a patent? A patent uh, is when you invent something, you create something and you apply at the U.S. Patent Office. Basically, you get a, a certification that said you invented this thing and no one can use this thing without your permission. And usually you give permission in the form of money. People pay you. You say, hey, yeah, you can you can make toys out of my invention. Right. Uh, what did he invent? Uh, he invented a way when boats would get stuck in shallow water. So river boats would get stuck often. And he invented these um, these kind of like balloons, these accordions, these uh, you would inflate them. And it would help lift the boat out of the shallow water so you could push it off of the sandbar that you were trapped on, for example. This is his invention. He didn't really make any money off of it, but it is pretty neat. A little fun fact that Abraham Lincoln is the only president that holds a patent. And that's pretty awesome, right? He's an inventor, among other things. All right. So as we continue to walk around here, um, the dining room, and this is the family room. So remember I said the boys weren't allowed, his children weren't allowed into 
the parlor to play around? Well, they were allowed in the family room. This is where Abraham Lincoln would spend time with his kids. Uh, they would socialize together. They would, he would read to them. Uh, they had many different animals. He was famous for taking cats off the street. Shout out for any cat owners out there. He had a big dog as well in his home. So shout out to anyone that has any dogs. Do you have any pets? Let me know right now. And so these are all just uh, a lot of things that the family would do in the family room. Speaking of family, who was in his family? So Abraham Lincoln married Mary Todd Lincoln. Now, Mary Todd Lincoln and Abraham, they met at a local dance in Springfield. So once Abraham Lincoln moved to Springfield, he taught himself to be a lawyer from New Salem. Uh, he met Mary Todd at a local social event. And this is what young people would do in the day. And so he went up to her and he said, I would like to dance with you in the worst kind of way. They had their dance and Mary Todd went back to her cousin and she said he was right. He danced in the worst kind of way. So if you yourself are not a good dancer and you want to be president of the United States, it is not required. Abraham Lincoln was not a good dancer, according to his wife. Well, they ended up getting married even though he was a bad dancer. <laughs> and Abraham never knew he could become president, right? We talked about this a little bit last week, but Abraham Lincoln grew up in a very poor family and he came from uh, Southern uh, uh, Indiana at the time from a farm. He never dreamed he could be president of the United States. But Mary Todd grew up in a more wealthy family in Lexington, Kentucky. And she, as we just talked about, uh, women weren't allowed to be politicians back then, but she definitely knew she wanted to be married to a politician. Uh, if she, she knew she couldn't be president, but she had aspirations to be Mrs. President. And uh, here at the Springfield Presidential Library for Abraham Lincoln, they have an exhibit of many of her gowns that she would wear during political events in Washington, D.C. Uh, here for Mary Todd. Now, they had four children. They were all boys, and Robert Todd Lincoln was the oldest, then Edward, then Willie, then Thomas Lincoln. And Thomas, uh, he nicknamed Tad, and because of a tadpole. You ever seen a tadpole with the big head and the little tail coming off then, right? So he thought Tad had a big head as a kid, so he nicknamed him Tad. Uh, unfortunately, the three youngest boys all died pretty young in life. Uh, and Robert Todd was his only child to grow up as an adult, to get married himself, and to have children himself. But Robert Todd's grandchildren never had kids. So today, there are no living descendants of Abraham Lincoln. All right, so when we come back to the family room, now we know there would be all boys in the family room, right? And they would participate uh, in family activities. And what type of entertainment do you think the Lincolns had? What was their favorite form of entertainment? You can let me know right now if you're playing along on quizzes. All right, so it was a stereoscope. What is that? So this is a stereoscope. You see this big wooden box here and all these cards beside this big wooden box? This is it. So these cards have two pictures, one on each side. You ever seen one of these before? Maybe at a yard sale or anything like that. What are these? Well, these are stereoscope uh, pictures. And back then you have these two eyepieces, kind of like binoculars. You would look in this big box and you would put the cards in the top of the box. Now, what does this thing do? Right? It makes the flat 2D image 3D. Now, how does it work? Well, I bet you you've used one of these before. Maybe you just didn't know about it. So the one on the left is something like my grandmother would have used. Uh, this is something like me and maybe some of your teachers used when we were kids, the Viewmaster. Um, and then many of you have used something like this, like our Google Cardboard, or maybe you've seen uh, something like this, right? These goggles. Now, uh, today we don't put a card with a still image in it. A lot of times you put your phone up there and you have 3D video. How does a stereoscope work? Well, you look at the same image, but your eyes are separated and the images are offset just by the littlest bit. 
And what this does is it tricks your mind to see a 3D image, right? It's an illusion. And so it's a pretty cool technology that they were using in the 1800s and we're still using today. How cool is that? All right, so that's the scene. Yeah. Now, Abraham Lincoln was often away from home for months at a time working. But when he was home working, he worked in town at his law office. It's just down the street. You can visit there today. And it's just across from the state house. Here's his building of his law office right here. Let's go check it out. So this is the state house. And again, you can still come here today. And when you walk into the state house, you'll find courtrooms. Now, remember, Abraham Lincoln was a lawyer. So he would come here and argue court cases when he was in town in Springfield. But he was also a politician. So he also worked upstairs where the chambers are for the state legislator. This is where they would come and make laws. But Abraham worked across the street at his law office. It's still there today. It's the Lincoln and Herndon Law Office. Now, when he was out of town, uh, he would leave home for months at a time because that's how lawyers worked back then. Uh, a lot of times the court would come to your small rural town if you lived far away, and they would do that for two or three months at a time, and he would be off away from home riding around central Illinois. But when he was in town, he was here. And he would often bring his kids to work. Uh, his law partner hated when he brought his kids to work because uh, he was not uh, very uh, a lot of rules for his kids all right so let's come back here we're going to go upstairs now and continue our tour of the house now on the second floor as we walk up we're going to start off in the guest bedroom head over to lincoln's room mary todd lincoln's room and then we'll head back down the back of the stairs we'll see the boys room and they often had someone working and uh, living with them as well so let's go back here and continue our tour of the second floor so this is when you get to the top of the stairs, uh, a little place to sew and knit for Mrs. Lincoln. And uh, she would often sit there and sew and look out the window to the boys. Now, that was the guest bedroom. And this is Abraham's bedroom. As we look around uh, Abraham's bedroom, you'll see a couple of interesting things. One is look at all the patterns, right? Very loud back then as far as like floral patterns and the carpets and everything. Uh, it's kind of overwhelming when you walk in here for me. Uh, we have uh, his desk in the corner, his wardrobe. All these are original, but again, the wallpaper and the, the carpets are recreated for the original. And then his bed. Look how short this bed is. Remember, Abraham Lincoln was six foot four inches tall. So I can just imagine his feet would hang off the end of this bed. Uh, I don't know. I didn't see him sleeping in it, but, you know, that's what I imagine. Now, this is Mary Todd's room. So she had her own bed, her own bedroom. And that's just a way of showing wealth back in the 1800s, having a his in her bedroom. Now, every room, you might have noticed these in all of the rooms so far. These are small wood stoves, kind of like a fireplace, right? It, you build your fire in there. You close the door. It's called a wood stove. In every room you want to heat up in the 1800s, you have to build one of these, uh, build a fire in there to warm those rooms. A lot of work back in the 1800s. Speaking of a lot of work, uh, you know, if there's no plumbing in the 1800s. So if you want to use the bathroom explorers, right, in the middle of the night, what do you want to do? Do you want to go outside to an outhouse in the middle of the night? It's scary out there in the dark, right? Or do you want to use the bathroom inside? Well, how do you do that if there's no indoor plumbing? Well, usually you use what's called a chamber pot. And that's what it sounds like. It's a pot you use the bathroom in and you usually slide it under your bed. And they might have a lid in there to keep some of those smells in there. Uh, but Mary Todd had the best situation. You can see this uh, chair with a top on the middle there for that hole. This is an early toilet. And they work the same way. You slide a chamber pot in that uh, under there, uh, under that hole, and you go in there. And then in the morning, you take out your chamber pot, and you go outside, and you dump it in the outhouse. Hey, if you lived in the 1800s, Explorers, would you go to bathroom in the middle of the night in a chamber pot? Or would you go outside and brave in the dark? Let me know right now on quizzes if you're playing along with us. All right, so it's almost a tie there. Uh, a lot of people are going to take the chamber pot. 
uh, as we see there. And some people are like, no way, no way. I'm still going outside. I don't care how dark it is. So when we come back here and continue our walk around, uh, you can also see that little uh, bath pan. So that's how you take baths as well. Uh, this is the boys' room. Now, when Robert Todd was old enough, he, he, you know, by the time the Lincolns, this didn't start off as a two-story house. The Lincolns bought this as a one-story house, and the more money that Abraham uh, made as a lawyer, they expanded the house, and eventually they put, built a second floor. And remember the parlor we were in, the back parlor? That was the original bedroom for Mary Todd and Abraham. Uh, and so uh, up here in the boys' room, uh, the three youngest boys shared a room uh, here. And you can see here, just like you would wash up for dinner, just like we talked about using the bathroom, you would have to take a pitcher outside, pump it up in a well, come inside, wash up for dinner that way um, as well. So a lot of uh, work in the 1800s. And the Lincolns often had someone living with them. Mary Todd, remember Abraham's gone for work for uh, sometimes months at a time. And so they had a small bedroom in the very back for a young lady to come live with them and help out around the house from time to time. So let's go down the stairs and out the kitchen. In the kitchen, we have a big wood stove, of course, for cooking. And Abraham Lincoln often wore a big, funny hat, right? That big, funny hat Abraham Lincoln would wear. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, it looks like this. The stovepipe hat. It's called a stovepipe hat. Why is it called a stovepipe hat? We'll come back here and look at this stovepipe coming off of the wood stove, right? So you see that big, tall pipe? This is where that type of hat gets his name, called a stovepipe hat. What was Abraham Lincoln famous for keeping in his stovepipe hat? Do you know that? Let me know right now if you know that over on quizzes. <laughs> All right. So if you said notes and papers, you are correct. Notes and papers are what they kept in or what he kept, I should say, in that stove pipe hat. Now, we'll go ahead and walk out the back of the house here. Now, when you look at the back of the house, this is a model of the house. And they have many models when you visit here to show uh, each time they renovated the house. You see buildings out there for the horses. There's wells back here. And remember that outhouse we talked about and someone mentioned that big hoop skirt that Mary Todd would wear? Well, when they held political parties, they had a bathroom for those big hoop skirts of the day. You can see how the bathrooms or the toilets, the sitting parts are away from the wall instead of a one long bench. And that is to accommodate those fashion designs of the mid 1800s. All right, Explorers, that is Abraham Lincoln's adult home in Springfield, Illinois. We're going to jump right into our geo quiz. And if you have time to stick around with this, we're going to answer all your questions that you have right after. Remember, our quizzes are fast, rapid fire, and you get something for winning on today's show. So there are five questions coming at you. We're going to give you 10 seconds per question. If you're still getting logged in, you want to do that very quickly because we're going to start giving out points here. Remember, the quicker you answer correctly, the more points you get. All right. What was Abraham Lincoln's hat, that big, tall hat that he would wear? What type of hat is that? Let me know right now on quizzes. All right, where? Where did Abraham Lincoln live? Where did Abraham Lincoln live as an adult? He lived before Springfield. I mentioned it briefly. Where did he live before Springfield? All right. So it's New Salem. New Salem, Illinois is where he lived. It's no longer a town today. It's a state park. The town kind of died out, which is what a lot of towns did back then. All right. Next question is, how many children did Abraham Lincoln have? All 
right. He had four kids, four boys. And Abraham Lincoln was the only president to have what? The only president to have a patent. All right. Great job there. And last question coming at you. What was he famous? What did he keep in his hat? What did he, or sorry, what jobs did he have? Oh, I wrote down the wrong question again. What jobs did Abraham Lincoln have before he became the president? Choose all that apply. All right. He was all of these at one point. And as we learned most of his adult life, he was a lawyer. So I'm going to calculate up your scores, explorers, before we tell you who won today's show. Uh, go ahead. When we show you our winner board, you may not see. Sometimes your devices don't show your game name. So if you look right here on a personal device, you'll see your ranking. If you look up towards the top up here on a Chromebook, you'll see your ranking. If you're ranked number one, you are today's winner. All right, and anyone change your mind today? Would you like to visit Springfield, Illinois? Yes, no, undecided. Let me know right now. All right, so today's winner is dun da da da. It looks like we have is it King Y S with ten. 1,120 points. If you are ranked number one, congratulations, Explorer. You're going to get a, a postcard from me, GOB, from the Learn Around the World Studio, a elephant poo-poo paper postcard, that is. All right, if you're sticking around with us and sending in questions, we're going to have our lightning round of questions, and I'll show you a little bit of New Salem in our post show. If you're heading out, have a great rest of your day. Stick around. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, if you are heading out, have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone else out there. Don't forget, next week we have our sacred monk. So join us back here next week. Welcome back, everyone. Next week, we are headed to the sacred monkey forest in Bali, Indonesia. So I can't wait for that one. It's going to be a great time. All right, if you have questions on the chat and you're not with us live, make sure you are putting those questions in the chat right now because we're going to start getting over to them if you are one of our guest classrooms with us live we are going to you first so let's go ahead and pull up one of our classrooms here and you should be mute unmuted hi everyone do you have a question over there in texas Second. Second. um does abraham reason have a lot of money. Does Abraham Lincoln have a lot of money or did Abraham Lincoln have a lot of money? That's a great question. So Abraham Lincoln built up a nice life for himself. So at the time he did have a lot of money for the average person. When we compare him to other presidents of the United States of America, if you look at all the presidents that we've ever had and you look at their net worth, that means how much money they had. And if you if you, uh, if you kind of convert that to today's money, Abraham Lincoln is one of, if not the least wealthiest president that we've ever had. Many of our presidents, and this is something we don't talk about a lot usually, but it's definitely true. If you don't believe me, go look it up for yourself. All of our presidents, almost every single one of them have been extremely wealthy or they were either built it for themselves, which quite few of them did, by the way. And many of them were actually born into their money. They were born wealthy. And it makes sense when you think about it, right? Because right, who has time to take off work? The average person, I can't just take off work and tour around the country for two years trying to get up support for my presidential campaign, right? Who has time to do that? Well, people that already have a lot of money can do that. And so it kind of makes sense when you think of it that way. Um, but yeah, we should definitely have a public fund. Have some of our teachers run for president. I'd vote for you. All right, so let's go ahead over to our other classroom we have with us today. And all right, hi, New Jersey. How's it going? Do you have any questions? 
Um, how did Abraham Lincoln do all of these jobs at once? How did he do all his jobs at once? Right, he didn't do all of them at once. Uh, if we talk about uh, all of the um, jobs we talked about, being a surveyor, being he, he dabbled in a lot of different jobs uh, when he was in his 20s, so when he first left his home. So let's kind of answer it right there. When we go back, when we kind of fill in some gaps between last week and this week of our story of Abraham Lincoln's life, he spent most of his life, 31 years in Illinois. But when he, when he uh, left, sorry, when he left Indiana, I don't know why, what's up with that? Uh, when he left Indiana, he ended up in New Salem uh, is where he went first. Uh, so if I come back here, there we go. Maybe we can try it better this time. All right, so let's try it again. No, still run. All right, well, I'll just fill it in. So Abraham Lincoln, he spent about a year as soon as he left his, the Lincolns moved to uh, Illinois. Uh, he left his father's home. He got them set up, helped them build their cabin. Uh, then he worked on the Mississippi River for almost a year. And then when he came back to Illinois, he settled in a small town called New Salem. And New Salem is where he he owned a store, was the store, his partner, uh, they kind of went under, didn't really do that great of a job. He was a postmaster for a while, a surveyor for a little bit of time. He served in the army for a little bit of a time. He tried another store out. Uh, so he did a lot of different jobs and they weren't all at one time. Uh, but great question. Uh, dun, dun. What number president was he uh, coming in on our chat? That's a great question. He was the 16th president of the United States of America. He was elected two times or two terms, but unfortunately he was uh, assassinated during his second term in office. So uh, unfortunately he did not complete that second term uh, of Abraham Lincoln. All right. So let's go back over to Texas. Do we have a, another question there? Lincoln moved to, how did Abraham Washington, D.C. How did Abraham Lincoln move to Washington, D.C.? Oh, how did he move to Washington, D.C.? Great question. Well, back then, uh, no cars yet. Uh, most people would go by train and and he would take boats. So if you, you look at a map of the country, um, when he before he became president, he served uh, in the legislature in Washington, D.C. And on the way home to Illinois, they went into the Great Lakes. That's when he actually invented the, uh, the boat um, inflator, right? That would lift the boat out, remember his patent? Uh, because on his way home to Illinois, they got stuck on a sandbar for a long time. And that's where he kind of came up. He got the gears turning where he came up with that idea. Um, but usually he went by train. Uh, it was big famous uh, on his way to Washington, D.C. He actually was clean shaven. Uh, a lot of people know him as having a beard as the president. And hey, Maybe you should write more letters out there, Explorers. A young lady he met on the way to Washington, D.C., she wrote him a letter and said, uh, Mr. Lincoln, I think you would look quite nice with whiskers. And that's what they called him a beard back then, whiskers. And, uh, and so he agreed and he grew a beard because of her letter. That's kind of a cool story. And, uh, but even when he uh, was assassinated and he died, his body was taken back to Springfield by train and it was one of the big events in U.S. history because the train would stop at almost every town along the way and people would come pay their respects to, uh, to his casket. So it was kind of like a moving um, um, uh, funeral uh, on the way to Springfield. And then the state house that we saw, uh, his casket was uh, there in the state house for people to come pay their respects to the state house before being moved to his tomb. And his tomb is in Springfield, Illinois, by the way. All right, let's go over to New Jersey. Do we have a question there? How did he, his three kids die? How did, uh, I missed the first part. How did what start? How did his three kids die? Oh, his three kids die. Oh, so unfortunately, Abraham Lincoln, as we learned about last week and this week, Abraham Lincoln experienced a lot of death throughout his life. And it's, you know, a lot of times, um, uh, you know, a lot of people feel uncomfortable talking about death, but it's a reality. And it was a reality of Abraham Lincoln's life. So we just can't talk about Abraham Lincoln's life without the fact that he experienced a lot of his death. When he was a young boy, his mother died. 
Uh, his sister died uh, when he was a teenager. And then when he was an adult, his three youngest kids died. And this is something that was quite common back then and a lot of disease. And a lot of it was because of unsanitariness. So like today, we don't have to worry about a lot of this because many of us in our towns and go ask your teachers about this or maybe your parents. But if you don't know about your water treatment uh, plant, your water treatment facility near where you live or how you get clean drinking water to where you live or your uh, your waste department. So the people that pick up your trash or the your sewers or your if you live out in the country and you don't have sewers, you have a septic tank usually. Right. So you want to get those waste away from you. Right. Because that can harbor um, a disease and a lot of things. And that's how his youngest son, Ted, actually died of typhoid fever. And that's one of the ways that typhoid is spread is uh, through feces. And uh, if you're not washing hands and it gets in things, gets in the drinking water, then typhoid fever can be a problem. Uh, today, we usually typically don't have to worry about it in the United States. Uh, great question. Uh, and let's go back over to Texas. Do we have a question there? Go for it. Um, I forgot. Okay. Uh, Rapa. How old did he live up to? You say how old did he live up to? Yeah, he was 56 years old. So he was shot on April 14th. There we go. He was shot on April 14th, 1865. He died the next day. He was shot at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. So he was watching a play uh, when he was assassinated. Uh, he actually survived the night until the next day. Um, he was taken across the street to the Pearson House. And you can visit there today when you go to Washington, D.C. Uh, there's the Ford Theater Museum um, you can visit. And I believe the Pearson House has been restored uh, into original condition as well, kind of like we just saw the Lincoln House um uh as well uh great question uh let's go back over to new jersey do we have another question there nope let's see i'm not getting your audio All right. Well, we can come back to you. If you are definitely joining us in the chat, make sure you uh, add your questions there. So what we'll do is we'll end up with a brief tour. We talked a lot about New Salem today. I'll give you a quick tour of New Salem and then we'll say goodbye and uh, appreciate everyone hanging out with us today. So uh, New Salem, that place he went before he moved to Springfield. So it's a state park today and you can actually visit there. Let's go. All right, so when you visit New Salem State Park, a lot of it, just like we talked about last week at the Boyhood Home, uh, has been restored. Uh, a lot of these buildings have been recreated. They aren't the originals, but this town would have looked very much like this. Uh, a small street going through the center of many buildings that were homes and businesses. Uh, this small town, which was typical uh, throughout Illinois and Indiana at the time, some of these towns that uh, were new towns, continued to be towns like Springfield did, and they're still there today. And then some of them uh, stopped being towns, meaning people moved away from there. Why would you move away from a town? Well, this town was uh, right beside a river. And so that means uh, a lot of people would come and go from this town by water. Um, but when trains became more of a thing, uh, other towns would sprout up and become more popular because they lived on the train line. And uh, so remember, the main way to get around before trains was by water and over land, right? Um, and then the main way after train was train. And then today is cars, of course, and we have airplanes as well. Abraham Lincoln had a general store. Uh, there's two of them, two locations. And this is one of the general stores here. Uh, Abraham, one of his stories, uh, one of his nicknames is Honest Abe. 
So the story goes, someone overpaid him at his general store and he walked miles to return the change uh, to that person. Uh, and what is a general store? A general store, again, is where you would go buy things you couldn't make or raise yourself. Maybe uh, nice linens to make some nice clothes with. Uh, you would still have to make your clothes, but you would go buy those linens or maybe some sugar or coffee, things you didn't have access to uh, on your farm, on your house uh, in Illinois or uh, Indiana at that time. All right, so this is uh, New Salem. It's a state park, and you could definitely visit there today. All right, Explorers, thanks for hanging out with me today on the Geo Show. I'm Geo B, your host, and we can't wait to see you on our next one. Next week, we're going to out of country. We're going to Indonesia, and we have a fabulous show lined up. We're going to see lots of monkeys. We hope to see you then. Until next time, keep exploring. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys. Bye. Bye.